Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Nuts Important back here again with another console killer video. Today we're gonna destroy the Xbox Series S. Click the subscribe button, notification bell, check out my Patreon, OnlyFans, GoFundMe and merch store. Without further ado, let's get into it. <laughs> Sorry. Could you imagine? £250 is potentially a lot of money. For me, it's two weeks rent. For some people, it's their monthly fuel costs or what they spend on food. Some people will never have that amount of money to spend on a single item for themselves, especially on something non-critical like a console or a gaming PC. But, ah, f*** those people. My name's not important, and this, well, it's... So, bad taste jokes about poverty aside, if you watched my previous videos, or, you know, any tech news at all, you'll know that A, next-gen consoles are coming, B, they're cheaper than expected, and C, one can't really build a PC that matches them spec for spec, even on the used market, without spending more than the cost of a console. If, however, you've decided the console life just isn't for you, what could you spend your £250 on that would come close? Well, starting with the CPU, I've chosen the AMD Ryzen 3 1200. This first-gen 14 nanometer process part is a powerful quad-core hamstrung slightly by the lack of multi-threading. Honestly, if you can stretch your budget, the Ryzen 3 3100 or 3300X are much better buyers, but if your budget is strict, it's available to buy used for about £45, though I've seen them as low as £35. Be sure to pick up the cooler, which I've managed to buy for £4, but I certainly wouldn't recommend paying over £10 for one. The motherboard, a Gigabyte A320, doesn't offer much except a place to put your components with no flexibility for overclocking. However, it's about £40 new and can sometimes be found used for about £30. First gen Ryzen is a bit memory sensitive. I'm fortunate enough to have the refreshed 1200 as f edition with lower power consumption and better memory compatibility, but be sure to check before buying RAM for first gen Ryzen's. My team group 2x4GB kit set me back £25. Uh, the boring bits are on screen now and can be pretty much interchanged with whatever good deals you can find locally, but the big deal is the graphics card. Prices on X mining Radeon RX 470s have fluctuated a lot lately, being available for just £50 on AliExpress only 12 months ago, before seeing prices jump as demand went up for some reason. Anyway, prices seem to be heading back in the right direction, and I picked up this Sapphire 4GB card on eBay for £65. Totaling everything up, then you should be able to build this PC for about £250 to £260. Now we've got it, let's see how it performs. Kicking off with the newest title on my list, Star Wars Squadrons is the long-awaited follow-up to LucasArts' venerable X-Wing series. Despite looking distinctly modern and fancy, this squad space sim is surprisingly lightweight, with 1080p ultra settings resulting in average frame rates of about 138. I was playing on a TV using an Xbox 360 controller for that genuine console experience, but if you love this type of game as much as I did in the 90s, playing on PC gives you access to VR headsets, flight sticks, mouse control and keyboard shortcuts to really immerse yourself. From the newest title to the oldest fan favourite GTA 5 runs exceptionally on this setup, averaging over 85 FPS even with the settings cranked pretty high. It remains to be seen if the next gen edition improvements promised for the PS5 get ported to the PC version, but if it does, I look forward to seeing how this PC handles them.
I have a love-hate relationship with Battle Royale games. I love the concept, I hate how bad I am at them. Call of Duty Warzone glides along on this rig, with averages over 90 FPS at the system default settings. While gamers with TVs might not see a practical difference between this and an Xbox Series S version, owners of high refresh rate monitors could potentially benefit from these higher frame rates, and of course the PC mouse and keyboard will forever be the definitive way to play competitive FPS. With the world's most popular battle royale potentially being limited to non-mobile platforms soon, it'll be comforting to know that this rig can run Fortnite at over 80 FPS even at epic settings, and with more competitive tweaks could potentially give you that high frame rate experience that you are going to spend hundreds of pounds on a gaming phone for. Against my better judgement, I once more spent many hours downloading and persisting with Microsoft's very pretty Vacation Simulator 2020. While this is probably going to be available on Xbox pretty soon, for the time being it is a PC exclusive, and that means tons of visual tweaks, control methods, and the promise of VR support in the near future. Frame rates are unspectacular, but smooth enough as not to spoil the sense of realism. Honestly, I'm pretty floored with what performance can be had from a PC for just £250 in 2020. No, it doesn't have all flash storage, and it can't trace rays, but it can do more than just game and stream, and it can support upgrades that could extend its useful life for potentially years to come. Let me know what you think in the comments, check out my other videos, and subscribe to see my upcoming build on an even tighter budget. Kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.